Hi guys, welcome back. Today we'll start with Unit 7E and our theme for today is Profiles. So let's get on to 7E. And if you have your books, you can open it and then we can go through the lesson together. Alright, so what are we talking about today and what's the topic for today? Our topic for today is take a seat, please. And we are looking at a job interview. And what are some of the things that you can expect when you go to a job interview? Now, most of you um, will come across this later on in your lives. Um, some of you will have your own businesses. Some of you will work for an employer. So let's have an example of what you can expect when you have a job interview. This is quite an informative lesson and I think that we can learn a lot from what's going to happen today. We'll look at some examples of a job interview. Our title for today is Take a Seat, Please. So without any further ado, open Lesson 7E and let's start the lesson. Right, so we're looking at a job interview. Our topic for today is take a seat, please. Right, if we start with list unit one, uh, number one, listen and repeat. Now pay attention to the intonation and when we talk about intonation, it's simply the level of where your voice goes up or down. I want you to listen because I'm going to play um, all of these words for you, I want you to listen to all of them, pay close attention to how they say and the intonation of where the words or the action of the voice goes up or where it goes down or it stays the same. Alright, so please take a seat. Okay, that's the first one. Please take a seat. Right, second one is I'm also friendly and polite. So let's have a listen to that. I'm also friendly and polite. Okay, the third one, third one, it says here you're good in math. So I'll play it for you. It says here you're good in math. Right, and the fourth one, are you able to work Saturdays? Are you able to work Saturdays? Right. Yes, that's not a problem. Yes, that's not a problem. Okay, I think I'll give you a try. I think I'll give you a try. And the last one, come in at 8.30 or as uh, some of the Western teachers say, half past eight. Come in at 8.30. All right, so listen and repeat. So pay close attention to the intonation like I've just played it to you. I hope you guys listen to the intonation, um, where the voices go up, or how she says some of the words. For example, please take a seat. You guys have listened and you guys have paid attention. So let's go on to the next slide. All right, the sentences below are from a dialogue between an employer and a job applicant. Who says each sentence decide in pairs. Now, before I do this one, I want to play the dialogue first so that we can have an idea of who is talking before I go back to this slide. So we will do this together and then we, at the end of it, we can come back to this page. But I first want to play the audio for you so that we can have a feel and you guys follow in your books. Good morning. Please take a seat. Good morning. Thank you. So why do you think you will be a good cashier, Sarah? Well, I'm honest, hardworking and reliable. I'm also friendly and polite. Hmm. 
It says here you're good in math. Yes, that's right. I'm actually top of my class. I see. Are you able to work Saturdays? Yes, that's not a problem. Well, I think I'll give you a try. Could you come in for a couple of hours tomorrow? I'm afraid not. I'm free on Monday, though. Okay. Come in at 8.30. I'll show you how everything works, and if all goes well, you can start next week. Thank you very much. Alright, so I've played you the audio so that you guys can have a feel of what's going on. You can read through the text. I would actually want you guys to read through the text. So now we can go back and answer the questions. Alright, so um, the dialogue, which means uh, two people are speaking, are between an employer and a job applicant. So who's the employer and who's the job applicant? Well, the employer is the one that's, um, that has advertised the position the one that's going to pay your salary or wages and then the job applicant is the one that applies so if I can put this in simple terms if you are looking for a job or you want to work at Big C Big C will be your employer and then you will be the job applicant right if you want to work for Apple computers one day and you are this uh, famous programmer you will be the job um, applicant and then Apple, Apple will be your employer. Alright, so let's move on. Um, looking at our example, the sentences below are from a dialogue between the employer and job applicant. So who says each sentence decide in pairs? Now you guys cannot decide because you guys are watching this. So let's go through together. Uh, please take a seat. Was it the employer or the job applicant? Uh, I would say that the employer said that. If you guys guessed it correctly, then well done. Okay, I'm also friendly and polite. Who do you guys think is talking? I'll give you a moment to decide. But I think it was the job applicant. Okay, we will look at the answers later on. Uh, as I will reveal the answers to you. Okay, it says here that you are good in math, right? I would say that the employer said that because the employer is looking through the CV or resume as they call it. Right, are you able to work on Saturdays? Okay, obviously this is the employer asking the question to the job applicant. Alright, Yes, that's not a problem. Answering the question of whether or not the job applicant can work on Saturdays and his response would be, yes, that's not a problem. Okay, I think I'll give you a try. Did you think the applicant or the job applicant or the employer said that? I'll give you a chance. The correct answer is employer. And come in at 8.30, who do you guys think said that? Was it the employer or the job applicant? And the correct answer? Right, so if we reveal our answers, you guys see that I was on the correct path. So this is the answer. Right, let's move on. Okay, now we've already played the audio because I wanted to play it first so that you can have an idea. Now, the only question that I can ask you at this point is who's having the conversation? Remember the dialogue is between two people, the employer and the job applicant. So Sarah is applying for the position of cashier, let's say for example at Big C. So the employer would be Big C in this case. So the dialogue is between the cashier, whose name is Sarah, and between Big C, for example. Okay, right. When um, is she supposed to come in? And that would be on Monday. And what time? That would be 8.30. All right. 
so let's move on to our next page okay read the dialogue and complete sentences one to five we've already read the dialogue so we will just go through each of the questions right so Sarah which is the job applicant wants to work as what if can you guys guess I'll give you a chance and Sarah wants to work as a cashier All right okay Sarah is a right now these are the traits and what do we mean when we talk about traits it just means that these are the things that she possesses for example maybe she's a hard worker maybe she's very attentive maybe she listens well so Sarah is what kind of a person okay. honest hardworking reliable friendly and polite All right and the answer is found here okay Right, she gets good grades in, in our passage, she gets good grades where, and this is the answer, it says here you're good in math, alright, which makes her perfect for the position because a cashier works with numbers and adding up, so she fits the profile very well. All right, she can work on, on which day can she work or which days can she work. In our passage, the employer asks her, can you work on Saturdays? All right, and the last one, Sarah's trial period starts. Now, the trial period is the probation period, and that's the period that they will test her to see how good she is in her job. So, Sarah's trial period starts on Monday at 8.30. Right, if you guys have guessed that, then good job. And then we can move on to the next page. Right, now read the dialogue aloud in pairs. Obviously, you cannot read the dialogue aloud in pairs. Um, but if you do have someone that's next to you, maybe your mother, and you want to practice, do feel free to do so. Right, once again, this exercise um, is talking about say the sentences below in your own language. Once again, this is just some good practice for you. Um, say it in your own language first and then say it in English as well. And just have some practice. If you have someone that's fluent in English, you can practice with them. You can video call some of your friends and go through some of these sentences with them just to have a little bit of practice and sharpen your skills okay, we can move on right take a seat please so find phrases in the dialogue which means so if we talk about fine phrases we're talking about similar meanings almost like synonyms for example um, Synonyms means the things that are the same. So find the words or phrases in the dialogue that means sit down, please. If we look at our dialogue, what do you think means the same as sit down, please? And as you can see, please take a seat, fits the profile perfectly. All right, let's go to number two. Yes, this is true. What do you think means the same as yes, this is true? And the answer is yes, that's right. Okay, if you've guessed it, good job, you're on the right track. If not, keep practicing and you'll get there eventually. All right, number three, I'm the best in my class. If we look in our passage, what can we say is similar to I'm the best in my class? I'm actually top of my class. All right, and the next one, of course, I can. So if we look in our passage or our dialogue, we can find a word that it has the similar meaning of, of course, I can. And that is, yes, that's not a problem. Okay, next, I can make it on Monday, though, find words that are similar to this in our passage. If you've guessed it, then 
I'm free on Monday though is similar to I can make it Monday though. All right, next one, if we move on, if you do things well. Now, what has similar meanings to if you do things well in the passage? I'll give you a chance and if all goes well. All right, if you guys guessed this, good job. If you did not, you can just go back and rewind and see if you can find similar meaning to what I've just explained. All right, so let's move on. Okay, now this little exercise is something that um, you guys can do once again as I've said that you can call some of your friends on video call and practice some of these what does it say look at the ad work in pairs imagine you are applying for one of the position advertised take roles and act out the interview and record yourself what does it mean one person will be the employer and the other person will be the job applicant so you will interview this is the perfect time where I say that you can call your friend and practice. The one can be the employer, the other one can be the job applicant. And when you are done, you can do and switch roles vice versa. All right. And let's move on. Right here, we're talking again about our favorite subject. And if you guys can remember, pronunciation we're looking at these special characters how do we pronounce them how does it help us to pronounce certain words well we will find out in the text now I want you guys to pay special attention to these words and how you say them it's very important pay special attention to how you say these uh, special um, phonemes or phonetics how we call them uh, these will help you to pronunciate certain words in the correct way. So, if we look at these two words, what sound does it make? Eh. I just played you the first one and the second one. Ah. Alright, I'll play you the first one again. Eh. Okay, and the second one. Ah. Right, so if you notice that the first one, what sound does it make? E. Right, and the second one, this character, what sound does it make? E. Right, first one, E, and the second one, E. Right, so we have words, eight words that we um, are looking at, and I want you to tell me which of these words falls in which category. Number one, we have sit. Do we say sit or said? And let's see right we say sit because the pronunciation of the phonetic is e all right number two do we say sit or said all right sad all right i'll say it again sad all right number three bad let me play the word for you Okay, I'll give you a chance to tick, and the correct answer is bad. All right, the difference between this first one, a eh, short sound, and a eh, longer sound. All right, and then I'll play the last one, bed, bid, and how do we pronounce this word with the short? E sound. All right, next one as we move on, cattle. How do we pronounce this one? E. All right, you guys have noticed cattle. All right, number two, cattle. And that's kittle. And how do we say this word? Number one or number two? And that falls under number one. Right, next word is pit. Do we say pit or pad? And that is number one. And the last one, pat. Okay, do we say pet or pad? And that's number two. 
obviously this is the name of a person I just wanted you to listen how they pronounce this word and place them in the correct categories so just remember for pronunciation our two phonetics for today is e sound and the e sound okay the one is shortened and the one drags a little bit on okay and that's all for our lesson we can move on to our workbook all right going on to our workbook on unit 7e I want you guys to do this first before we do it together because I want you guys to have a little bit of a practice and then you can pause the video and then when you are done we can all do it together all right moving on unit 7e let's start off vocabulary complete the sentences with take good job top all get these are your five words that we are going to work with under vocabulary complete the sentences all right we'll start with sentence number one he does not usually good grades at school but this here he did very well and the correct answer is get let's go on to number two if it mm, goes well at the interview you will be able to start work today and the correct answer is all okay right number three you have to be mm, in math to do this job looking at our options you have to be good number four please mm, a seat and wait a few minutes and the answer for number four is take number five the manager will see all the mm, applicants this morning and the correct answer is job All right moving on they give her the job because she was mm, of the class in high school and the correct answer is top All right let's move on to everyday English choose the correct response right here we have a dialogue between two people please take a seat and the correct answer is thanks I'll have one or thank you and it is option B right it's Sandra Garcia isn't it we have two options A or B and the correct response is B number three please tell me why you think you will be a good cashier at our computer store a or B and the answer is well I'm a I'm good in math and I'm honest okay number four are you able to work weekends A or B the answer is B because A refers to a compliment and B is a response to the question and number five please come in at nine options a or b now remember she's as she's telling her and she's not asking her a question so the answer for number five is b all right let's move on to our listening listen to sally describing her friend what is each one like i will play the audio and we will go through the answers together all right, I will play the audio for you and then we can have the answer later on. Unit 7E. Exercise 3. Page 55. Hi, Sally. How are things at your new school? Did you make any new friends? It was difficult in the beginning, but now I have a lot of friends. What are they like? Well, Lisa is the person I hang out with the most. She's short with dark hair. She loves helping the elderly. She must be very kind. Yes, she is. Another person I like but don't get to see often is Mark. Why is that? 
Is he so sociable you can't get hold of him easily? No, it's just that he's very hard working. When he's not studying, he helps his dad. They're building a small boat to sail this summer. Wow, that sounds like fun. What about the girl you mentioned the other day? The tall, slim one? Oh, you mean Debbie. She's very nice, too. She's so self-confident and fun to be with. And of course, then there's Peter. Isn't he the first person you met at school? Yes, he is. He's the class clown. He's always making us laugh. He sounds like fun. What does he look like? He's tall and he has short blonde hair. Sometimes his hair is curly, but this week it's spiky. All right, that's the audio. Now let's go back to our example. Okay, listen to Silly describing her friends. What is each one like? Okay, so these are the people. We have Lisa, Mark, Debbie, and Peter. And what are some of the qualities? So number one for Lisa, we have D. Lisa is kind. All right, number two, we have Mark. And Mark is hard working. That's the answer. Number three, we have Debbie. What type of a person is Debbie? And we see Debbie is self-confident. And number four, we have Peter. Looking at all the qualities in our listening, we saw or heard that Peter was a fun person. Alright, let's move on to number four and let's look at grammar. Use the information to compare the three women. Here we have three women, Sandra, Claire and Anne. And these are the different attributes of Sandra, Claire and Anne. Okay, I'll go to the first one. Sandra is 24 years old. Her height is 5.2. She has five years experience and her test score is 87. We can see that Claire and Anne, their scores are slightly higher. They have a little less experience. Okay, and they are a little bit older than Sarah. Right, so if we go to number one, Claire, good score, Sandra. We can say, and if we make a sentence and put it in the correct grammatical order, Claire has a better test score than Sarah. Right, number two, and tall Claire. I'll give you a chance to fill that in first. Remember, we are using superlatives in this example because we are comparing two people. So we can say Anne is taller than Claire. Number three, Sandra younger or. We are using superlatives again. So we can say Sandra is the youngest of all. And then Sandra experienced Claire. Once again, degrees of comparison. We can say Sandra is more experienced than Claire. And then Claire, old, all, once again superlatives, we can say Sarah is the oldest of them all. Alright, and the last one, put the adjectives into the correct form. Remember, adjectives describes nouns. So if we look at the first example, yes, our main uh, word highlighted in bold mount everest is mountain in the world we have high if we use our superlative we can say mount everest is the highest mountain in the world all right okay number two bill is much mm, tom he gets good grades in school and the answer to that one, if we lose degrees of, if we use superlatives, we can say smarter than. Right, number three, this is a mm, question on the test. That is our main word, highlighted in bold, difficult. How can we put that in the answer? And we can say that is the most difficult question. 
right number four the blue shirt is mm, the white shirt our word to use is expensive and we can say more expensive than and our last word France has mm, train in the world and our world in this boat is fast All right and we can say France has the fastest train in the world all right that's all from me we've done our lesson and our workbook see you again on the next slide when we do lesson 7e goodbye